And the main event. Oh, what a great main event this was. Hiroshi Tanahashi way, versus Shingo Takagi. Yes, for those of you that don't know, this is supposed to be Shingo and Ibushi, but uh, Ibushi is suffering from pneumonia, and it was touch and go whether he was going to ma- be able to make this show, and ultimately he was not able to make this show, and so Tanahashi ends up being the replacement, and they had a show the day before, and I'm not sure how long Tanahashi's match went, but I think it went like 20 minutes so he worked a long match the night before with Kenta and then comes in here for a 40-minute match with Shingo Takagi. This guy's in his early 40s, and, I mean, he's the greatest. But uh, a pretty impressive performance by Tanahashi here because they did not half-ass any of this. No, no, no. You could tell, like, early on um, Tanahashi's older and uh, not, a, not a lot of spring in his step. Not uh, taking turnbuckles real hard, but that said, he's still amazing. He is, he is the greatest. This was such a master class because the story is Tanahashi was a massive underdog. He was not supposed to be in this match. He was a last-minute replacement. He is old. That's that's part of the story. He's been around mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and and Takagi is, is at his absolute peak right now. Shingo is at his absolute best he's ever been. And that's that's that, that's the whole Him story. Him being old is actually an ongoing story from the last year. As they've been busy telling us how true. old and decrepit he is. And all of a sudden they need him for the main event of the fucking Tokyo Dome. That's what you get. They, could milk, this, they could milk that for a couple more years. He's not going to get younger. For the rest that of would, them. That would be news. <laughs> so so they, they told such a great story in how to have a guy be a massive underdog in a match and wrestle, wrestle as a massive underdog in the match in a way that you understand why he's the massive underdog, but at the same time make you believe that he still has enough fight left in him and, he, and he's still credible and dangerous enough that when he starts getting near falls at the end, it's not so much a wild, crazy dream as is, you know, this guy may have Shingo's number tonight. He may be the better man on this one night. So they go back and forth for it. It's hard grappling. And like at exactly the five minute mark, Shingo scores a DVD, Death Valley Driver, to really take over. And for a while, the slaughter just continues. And he's just tearing Tanah- Tanahashi apart. And it reminded me. And I had no idea what the finish was, except I figured if I, if, I, if, if Tanahashi had won, I f- probably would have known this a day later. Uh, but it reminded me of the Roosh Bandito title match in the ROH pay-per-view, where Roosh just destroys him for like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Shingo's just tearing him apart. <laughs> just ripping him to shreds. But then, about 10 minutes in, Tanahashi scores a dragon screw, and he takes over. And here, it's not flashes of offense. It's not glimmers of hope. Here's where he mounts an offensive and starts to make you believe, you know what? He, 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 this old dog may have one last day left in him. He survives the Tenru rush in the corner, throws him outside, does the high fly flow to the, to the floor, just crazy. Uh, Shingo blocks a sling blade. They just back and forth for a while, but Tanahashi still gets the clover leaf on him. They're each tearing each other's leg apart. They are brawling on the floor when when Shingo does basically a draping neck breaker. Like he's draping him across the barricade and drops him on his neck across his knee and drops an elbow. There's a GTR. GTR. He attempts to win via count out. And it's Red Shoes' time to shine. Red Shoes teasing a uh, doing a count out that he does not want to happen. Where he starts to get to like 16 and 17 and is frantically waving at the guy to get up because he doesn't want to be the ref who calls a count out in a IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match. And in the Tokyo Dome. In the Tokyo Dome, the main event. And so Tanahashi gets back in like 18 and Shingo just elbows his head off. <laughs> He's crawling on his hands and knees to get in, and his hands and knees end up in point A. His head's over in point B somewhere far away. And Shingo follows with the maid in Japan. It gets a two count. And Shingo just starts to unleash hell, strike after strike, and elbow and chops and punches. 
And Tanahashi won't go down. Suddenly he's he, he he's Hogan now. He he will not go down. He's just standing there growling until Shingo just rears back and hits a headbutt of complete death. And Tanahashi does the Kurt Angle taking a stunner flat back bump down to the ground. They go back and forth a bit, and uh, Tanahashi gets a straight jacket German and a sling blade. He wants to go up to the top rope, but Shingo is desperately grabbing onto his leg. And so Tanahashi grabs him, and Shingo's still down on the mat, and so Tanahashi pulls him up to a knee, and he hits the Kamigoye. The finishing move of the guy who was supposed to have this match. So, as you folks may have heard, there's still a pandemic going on in Japan. There are fans at the show, they're all wearing masks, and they are not supposed to make noise aside from clapping and stomping. But this was so exciting. 6,000 people. <gasps> They all gasp as one that Tanahashi has hit a Bushi's move. And they gasped again when he went up top and he hit the high fly flow. And the ref gets 2.9 and Shingo kicks out. But then the crowd remembers what they're supposed to do and they all applaud. They're all going crazy. Tanahashi's just the best, man. Dude, that was the greatest spot because I was He's watching so this match. Good. And the thing about the match is it, Tanahashi is a replacement on one day's notice, okay? And I don't think anybody really deep down believed that Tanahashi was going to win the IWGP title. But I know a lot of people wanted him to win the title, and I know that everyone believed that maybe he could win the title. It wasn't like somebody that they put in there like Goto, where it's like, there's no way Goto's won the title here. It's Tanahashi. And when he hit the Kamigoye and the High Fly Flow, everybody believed. And I was like, God damn it, they got him! But he kicked out of the high fly flow. That near fall was awesome. This was a a great match, and it was great. Well, we're not story. done yet, Craig. Uh, okay, are you are you still talking? What? Yeah, what's going? Vinny's got to finish the match. I, I can go on, but Craig, that's fine. It's, it, no, we don't fine. usually review matches this long, so I, I, I don't I don't want to talk for forty minutes and then have you guys go. So anyway. They have an epic strike exchange. It's just a war. And they're punching and kicking and chopping and elbow each other. Until, in a callback to earlier in the match, Tanahashi is the one to score the headbutt of utter death. And Shingo oh. is the one to do the Kurt Angle stunner bump. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was the most horrible clunking headbutt. And that's one of the some... top rope. We're yes. talking about different headbutts. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah, the top yes. rope one where somebody yelled, yep. holy fuck, and I still can't figure out who said it. Who yes, was that? Yes. The ref? Was that Red Shoes? Uh, probably? I don't know. But yes, the, 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 shortly after, the, 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 the one in the ring is a well-executed headbutt that looks violent, but is not, but it's very dramatic and explosive. Yes. But yes, Vinny, when they climb Vinny's, the ropes... Vinny's talking about the ones where they were extreme, where, where Tanahashi was actually hitting rights and lefts with his with his forearms and then finished it off with a headbutt. Yes. Yes. But then yes, th then he climbed the rope and then Shingo made him aside and yes, uh Shingo did the uh uh Shibata career ending forehead to forehead headbutt on the top rope. The Don't fuck were they that. thinking? There was it's no point to it. No. I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe it was an accident that they weren't supposed to clonk heads. But they clonked heads, and somebody screamed, holy fuck, like at the top of their lungs. And I can't figure out if it was one of them or if it was the referee, but it was somebody who was right there. So It, it was have one me, of actually. It was, it was one of those three that screamed it. And uh, enough thankfully, to be heard in Japan many hours later or earlier. Oh, it was brutal. Yeah. Now, the only good thing, and it's not a good thing, but the only redeemable, might be a better word, thing about this is it was essentially the finish. Because Shingo does this big giant headbutt, hits the uh, last of the dragon off the top ropes, and, and Tanahashi gets one last kick out, because he's Tanahashi, but that's it. And Shingo follows with the standard last of the dragon in the ring. A tremendous main event, and I thought this was the best match of the three that I saw. I thought it was the best match on the show. What did you think of this match, Craig? Well, I thought it was great storytelling, and I thought it was a really great match. No, um... Seriously, it was a great match, but <laughs> it was great storytelling. <laughs> was I was there. aside from that the one errant headbutt. That's the way I saw it, anyway. Um, 
I was hoping that Naito was taking notes that and and Ibushi were taking yeah. notes that you don't have to land on top of your head to have a great match. Um, they they were fairly safe with each other, um, and the storytelling the storytelling was outshined anybody dying in the ring. You know. Yes. You know the other thing about this match that has nothing to do with the two guys, but like I have to talk about this is how fucking great the camera work is oh, yeah. in New Japan Pro Wrestling. If you watch the main event from start to finish, it is so refreshing to watch a professional wrestling match that is shot like a professional wrestling match. Like a sporting. Not like a professional wrestling match, like a sporting event. Because what is the point... What is your job if you are filming a sporting event? Your job, I'm not in Tokyo. I'm not in the Tokyo Dome. I'm in I'm in I'm in Oregon watching on an iPad. Your job is to show me this match to the best of your ability. And their usage of uh, the cameraman on the outside and the way that the director will leave the camera on the action, it's funny because I have so many people that are so, uh, oh, the WWE production is the best and the AEW production sucks and uh, Ring of Honor sucks, blah, blah, blah. But you know what's funny? The whole point of WWE production is to not show us what happened. Yep. Whereas what you're supposed to do is actually show me what happened. If you're wrestlers can't throw punches without air showing mm -hmm. dude they need to go and learn how to throw punches don't torture me by filming it in such a way that every time someone throws a punch you have to switch cameras or if someone has a a chair and they are hitting someone with a chair as hard as they can 37 times you have to cut the camera 74 times or whatever 37 times 2 is uh, dude He's hitting him with a chair, bro. He ain't going to miss. There ain't going to be air. Just show me with one uninterrupted shot, him hitting a guy 37 times. I do not need 74 camera cuts. New Japan, their production, their the way that they shoot their main event matches, it's the greatest. They know they know what to show you. They know when to make the big grand shot of the entire building. They know when to show a close-up of one guy. They know when to show a close-up of another guy. They know when to get a wider shot and just let you watch them hit each other back and forth. And sometimes they'll do a little bit of a zoom and a little bit of a zoom out, but they will not cut the camera. They keep the camera on the action. And then there's always a moment where there's a double down or whatever and the crowd's buzzing and that's when they do the fade into a shot a close-up of the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship so you know what these men are fighting for and then they come back to the action and they show the guy on the mat and they show his face and they show him fighting it's so good and it's so refreshing and then I have to watch Raw tomorrow <laughs> and it it pains me because you know the show would Rob would probably even though it's three hours be like fifty times better if you had the New Japan production crew filming the matches so you could actually watch the matches and not sit there and have a seizure during the show. Giant Sing and Giant Silva. Wow, it's probably just as cool as buy a Dave Meltzer a Hiroshi Tanahashi autograph. What? I went to a Ring of Honor show with, it was Jeremy Botter, Dave Meltzer, myself. Well, there's Hiroshi Tanahashi. I went up, I introduced him. You know Dave Meltzer? Yeah, this is him. So, oh, oh, Dave Meltzer, Wrestling Observer. And I'm like, do you guys want a picture? He goes, yeah, $20. <laughs> so. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.